Good morning. This video lecture is for class 7th subject English chapter 10. This lesson has been taken from your honeycomb textbook and this is the last lesson that is the story of cricket. This is lecture 1 of the same. I am going to cover the entire story in one lecture only. The story of cricket with the title only I think you would have understood what is the lesson all about. It's about cricket and basically it is telling you the story of cricket. How cricket came into picture. How these days people love watching cricket. They don't even leave one single match that is coming or telecasted in the TV. Boys are fond of playing cricket. So this chapter is all about how cricket came. What was the foundation of cricket how did we find out such a beautiful game so without wasting any time let's quickly start the story of cricket contents that we are going to cover in this video lecture are first introduction what the story of cricket is all about Next, explanation of story. Each and every line, each and every paragraph will be explained to you all. New words and the meanings. New words and the meanings will be highlighted at the end of the story. Next, classwork. There are a set of questions that you need to do in the class. Followed by homework. It's mandatory to do the homework. Now let's quickly start with the first slide that is the introduction. Introduction. Sports is an integral part of a healthy life. It is one way in which we amuse ourselves, compete with each other and stay fit. Among the various sports such as hockey, football and tennis, cricket appears to be the most appealing nation, national entertainment today. How much do we really know about the game called cricket? The story of cricket, right? So sport as an, is an integral part. Integral means important part. It is one way in which we amuse ourselves. We amuse ourselves means we try to make ourselves, you know, feel pleasant. Amusing is to make ourselves feel pleasant, good. So it's one way in which we amuse ourselves, yes. So it is the most amusing cricket or you can say it's the most amusing sport which gives pleasure to us, which is very pleasant for us to sit and watch, yes. So... Basically, sports are very important for a healthy life. And uh, nowadays, cricket is the favorite of one and all. So now the author is asking us that how much do we really know about cricket? And he's telling us to read the story of cricket to know more about cricket. So without wasting any time, let's quickly start with the story. The story of cricket. Cricket grew out of the many stick and ball games played in England 500 years ago. The word bat is an old English word that simply means stick or club. By the 17th century, cricket had evolved enough to be recognizable as a distinct game. Till the middle of the 18th century, bats were roughly the same shape as hockey sticks, curving outward at the bottom. There was a simple reason for this. The ball was bowled underarm along the ground and the curve at the end of the bat gave the batsman the best chance of making contact. One of the peculiarities of cricket is that a test match can go on for five days and still end in a draw. No other modern team sport 
takes even half as much time to complete a football match is generally over in an hour and a half even baseball completes nine innings in less than half the time that it takes to play a limited overs match the shortened version of modern cricket so they have talked about the story of cricket and they are saying that cricket grew out with stick and ball that was played in england 500 years ago and the word bat means stick or a club by the 17th century cricket had evolved enough to be recognizable evolved means it was there revolving around people people knew about cricket yes till the middle of the 18th century bats were roughly the same shape basically the shape of the bats were same like a hockey like a hockey stick right shape as a hockey stick curving outwards at the bottom so there was a simple reason for this the ball was bowled underarm along the ground and the curve at the end of the bat gave the batsman the best chance of making contact one of the peculiarities of cricket what do you mean by peculiarity strange quality of cricket was that it can go for 5 days and still end in a draw so no sport today gets carried for more than an hour or half an hour right only cricket is a game which grows on for 5 days and even more there are test matches for i think 5 or 9 days and they still end in a draw so that's what the author is trying to say this is the strangest thing of cricket that test match can go for 5 days and no other sport goes on for such a long period of time now let's move further into the next paragraph another curious characteristic of cricket is that length of the pitch is specified 22 yards but the size or shape of the ground is of the ground is not most other team sports such as hockey and football lay down the dimensions of the playing area cricket does not grounds can be oval like the adelaide oval or nearly circular like chipok in chennai a six at the melbourne cricket ground needs to clear much more ground than it does at firosha kotla in delhi there is a historical reason behind both these oddities cricket was the earliest modern team sport to be codified the first written laws of cricket were drawn up in 1744 they stated the principals shall choose from amongst the gentlemen present to umpires who shall absolutely decide all disputes the stumps must be 22 inches high and the bail across them 6 inches the ball must be between 5 and 6 ounces and two sets of stumps 22 yards apart so basically another curious characteristic you can say another very surprising characteristic of cricket is that that the length of the pitch is specified the length of the pitch is 22 yards but the size or the shape of the ground is not there are some places there are oval grounds some are nearly circular in shape so although they know that the pitch should be of 22 yards but the size or the shape of the ground is not at all specified very clearly it can be any shape only they have to remember the pitch the length of the pitch should be 22 yards and then further they are saying that cricket is the mod is the first sport in which it is played in team okay so cricket was the earliest modern team sport to be codified and the first written laws of cricket there were laws of cricket were written in the year 1744 and they stated the principals shall choose from 
amongst the gentlemen present two umpires who shall absolutely decide all disputes whether it is a ball it's a no ball so there are two umpires who decide all the disputes disputes means all the fights or all the things which or decision making you can say yes the stumps must be 22 inches high so they have said that the stumps should be 22 inches high and the bail across them 6 inches okay the ball must be between 5 and 6 ounces and the two sets of stumps will be 22 yards apart and they have so said that the two stumps will be 22 yards apart which are there where from where the bowler comes moving further the world's first cricket club was formed in Hambledon in 1760s and the Mary, uh, Mary Lebon Cricket Club was founded in 1787. During the 1760s and 1770s, it became common to pitch the ball through the air rather than roll it along the ground. This change gave bowlers the options of length deception through the air plus increased pace it also opened new possibilities for spin and swing in response batsmen had to master timing and short selection one immediate result was the replacement of the curved bat with the straight one the weight of the ball was limited to between five and a half to five three and four ounces and the width of the bat to four inches in 1774 the first leg before law was published also around this time a third stump became common by 1780 three days had become the length of a major match and this year also saw the creation of the first six seam cricket ball if you look at the game's equipments. You can see how cricket both changed with changing time and yet fundamentally remained true to its origins in rural England. Cricket's most important tools are all made of natural pre-industrial materials. The bat is made with leather, twine and cork. Even today both bat and ball are handmade not industrially manufactured. So basically now they are telling us in this paragraph that the bats had changed from a hockey stick to a long bat and they were proper bats until now the bats are man-made they are not made with any industrial material still both bat and balls are made by human beings and they are telling us that in the year by the year 1780 there was that was the first time when there was a match for three days and uh, with gradually earlier there were two stumps which were used right with further coming to the arena or after years the three stump system started earlier there were only two stumps which were there placed before the batsmen but with the change in time and with the change of everything the concept of a third stump became common and there was creation of the first six seam cricket ball and there were many new equip equipments which were coming with the changing times yet fundamentally remained true to its origin in rural England. Still the way it was played with the bat and a ball it was played earlier the ball was given in the ground like it was just quickly rolled into the ground but now it was coming from the air the way we see it nowadays right so cricket's most important tools are made up of natural pre-industrial materials okay. The bat is made with leather, twine and cork. Even today both bat and ball are handmade and not industrial manufactured. Manufactured means made or you can say they are not sold or manufactured just for the way of selling. They are handmade and they are not industrially manufactured. No industry makes them and sells them. Okay. 
clear to everyone now moving to the next paragraph the material of the bat changed slightly over time once it was cut out of a single piece of wood now it consists of two pieces the blade which is made out of the wood of the willow tree and the handle which is made out of cane that became available as european colonialist and colonialist and trading company established themselves in asia and like golf and tennis cricket has refused to remake its tool with industrial or man made materials plastic fiberglass and metal have been firmly rejected but in the matter of protective equipment cricket has been influenced by technological change the invention of vulcanized rubber led to the introduction of pads in 1848 and protective gloves soon afterwards and the modern game would be unimaginable without helmets made out of metal and synthetic lightweight materials The origins of Indian cricket are to be found in Bombay and the first Indian community to start playing the game was the small community of Zoroastrians the Parsis bought brought into close contact with the British because of their interest in trade and the first Indian community to westernize the parsis founded the first indian cricket club the oriental cricket club in bombay in 1848 so with the change of time there was change in the making of the bat also earlier the bat was made with the wood of the willow tree and the handle which was made out of cane that became available in europe with europe clone uh, colonialist and then further trading company established which they made with the which they made like golf tennis cricket also refused to make their equipment with industrial or industrial or man made materials but later on with the making of helmet uh, gloves those knee pads which are there which the cricketers put they are all made of machinery or you can say they are all made in industry okay protective gloves and those rubber led to the introduction of the knee pads and uh, these helmets made up of metal and synthetic lightweight materials so gradually even the industrial thing started coming in cricket also with the introduction of these helmet gloves these knee pads <clears throat> so that was the coming or you can say the growing of the cricket parsi clubs were funded and sponsored by parsi businessmen like the tatas and the wadias the white cricket elite in india offered no help to the enthusiastic parsis in fact there was a quarrel between the bombay gymkhana a whites only club and parsi cricketers over the use of a public park the parsi complained that the park was left unfit for cricket because the polo ponies of the bombay gymkhana dug up the surface so now basically there were parsi clubs and they funded uh, they were funded by the parsi businessmen and they used to play cricket like the tatas and the bhatias the white cricket elite in india offered no help means they didn't give any help to the enthusiastic parsis who wanted to play cricket in fact there was a quarrel quarrel means fight between the bombay gymkhana a whites only club 
and the Parsi cricketers over the use of a public park. The Parsi complained that the park was left unfit for cricket because of the polo ponies. Polo ponies are the horses, okay, of the Bim Bombay Gymkhana dug up. A Parsi team beat the Bombay Jim Khana at cricket in 1889, just four years after the foundation of the Indian National Congress in 1885. An organization that was lucky to have amongst its early leaders the great Parsi statesman and intellectual dad, uh, Dadabhai Naruzi. Modern cricket is to, uh, dominated by test and one day internationals played between national teams. The players who become famous, who live on in the memories of cricket's public are those who have played for their country. The players Indian fans remember even now are those who were fortunate enough to play test cricket. CK Nayudu, an outstanding Indian batsman of his time, lives on in the popular imagination. When some of his great contemporaries like Palwankar Vithil and Palwankar Ballu have been forgotten. Even though Naidu was for past his cricketing prime when he played for India in its first test matches against England starting in 1932, his place in India, India's cricket history is because he was country's first test captain. So basically, even today people remember these old cricketers who have played faithfully for their country. So that's what they have told that even today these old Indian cricketers are there, are ruling the minds of the people because they have been playing as the introduction of the cricket or you can say when the cricket was introduced to the people so these were the cricketers and the player indian fans remember even now as they were very fortunate to play test cricket that time and these cricketers are even remembered today moving to the next slide india entered the world of test cricket in 1932 a decade and a half before it became an independent nation. This was possible because Test cricket from its origins in 1877 was organized as a contest between different parts of the British Empire, not sovereign nations. The first test was played between England and Australia when Australia was still a white settler colony. Similarly, the small countries of the Caribbean that together make up the West Indies team were British colonies still well after the Second World War. Television coverage changed cricket. It expanded the audience for the game by beaming cricket into small towns and villages. It also broadened cricket's social base. Children who had never previously had the chance to watch international cricket because they lived outside the big cities could now watch and learn by imitating their heroes. The technology of satellite, television and the worldwide reach of multinational television companies created a global market for cricket. Matches in Sydney could now be watched live in Surat. 
since india had the largest view viewership for the game amongst the cricket playing nations and the largest market in the cricketing world the game center of gravity shifted to south asia so now they are telling us that earlier the children those who were there in the small towns could not watch television and they did not know anything about cricket but with the time when the introduction of television was there they could reach to many places even the small town children they started imitating their heroes imitating means copying their heroes they also started learning by watching in, uh, in the television sets about crickets so that's what they have told and they have told that matches in the sydney now could be watched live in surat with the introduction of technology and satellite and since india had the largest viewership means there were a lot of people who used to sit and view the game for the amongst for the game amongst the cricket playing nations and the largest market in the cricketing world the game center of gravity shifted to south asia so there were a lot of people who were watching this game and uh, the game center means the center of the game cricket shifted to south asia moving to the next slide this shift was symbolized by the shifting of the icc headquarters from london to tax free dubai 150 years ago the first indian cricketers the parsis had to struggle to find an open space to play in today the global market place has made indian players the best paid most famous cricketers in the game men for whom the world is a stage this transformation was made up of many smaller changes the replacement of the gentle manly amateur by the paid professional the triumph of the one day game as it overshadowed test cricket in terms of popularity and the remarkable changes in global commerce and technology moving next so now we are going to start with the word meanings amuse cause to find something funny next word entertainment providing enjoyment roughly harshly or violently peculiarities unusual feature or habit version a particular 